Bo Burnham recently dropped a once-in-a-lifetime comedy special. I say comedy special with big air quotes around it, because for some folks it's more of a despair and cry fest than a comedy. But despite being his most acclaimed work to date, it's not without controversy. From haters to longtime fans, a lot of folks rolled their eyes at his song, White Woman's Instagram. And you know, I get where their distaste comes from, but I actually think it's one of the more thoughtful parts of the special. So today, I wanted to put on my swim trunks and deep dive into this song. <laughs> you know, go snorkeling around to explore why people think it's generic and why I happen to think it's a masterpiece. So come join me, the water's fine. Why all the watery puns, you might ask? I don't know, man, I'm just trying to have a catchy intro. What more do you want from me? Part 1. Look, I get it. If you've ever been on the internet, you've managed to trip over women bad content at some point. And if you've never been on the internet before, uh, welcome? I don't know why you chose to start with this video, but thanks. From boomers using millennial women as a punching bag to claim technology's making this generation weak, to misogynists, oh, oh sorry, men's rights activists, jumping at any excuse they can find to belittle women, the subgenre of women bad content spans a bunch of corners of the internet. So I just want to be clear, when I say it's perfecting boomer humor, or whatever phrase I end up using in the title, I don't think the genre of comedy is, <laughs> you know, good. I've had to watch a lot of these skits to find clips for the video, and there were times I just didn't laugh at a single joke in one of these. Not a belly laugh, not a chuckle, not even a puff of air blown out through my nose accompanied by a slight smirk. And it's not just that these skits usually serve some sort of reactionary political agenda, it's that the jokes are surface-level, boilerplate observations. Women post food pics. Women like the outside. <laughs> and women do be shopping, though. And to be fair, that is how some people feel about white women's Instagram. They feel the song is just low-effort jokes about the things women do that have been made fun of a million times before. To avoid misrepresenting their arguments, I want to let this critique exist in its own words. So here's a clip from renowned film critic, uh, Too Danny Too Furious. This is sort of a played out joke of how white women post the same thing on Instagram all the time. They're basic. With white women's Instagram, I feel like there were not a lot of jokes and it was just sort of like listing a bunch of stereotypes. Like this song just like, it reads like a list. It's just like he wrote down a bunch of things that white women do on their Instagram and made them rhyme, and then that's like the whole song. It's just like a list of things. And you know what? I can see where Mr. Too Furious is coming from here. The song is, in a sense, just a laundry list of basic white girl things, and a lot of the items he talks about, like lattes or pumpkins, are pretty common points of mockery from your boomer or MRA types. So, I understand that somebody might watch the special and walk away feeling that this part was one of the weaker links. However, there are a few key points to the song that, in my opinion, elevate the material leagues ahead of any boomer shit. So, if you'll join me, let's go explore some of them. By the way, if you haven't seen the video yet, I'd recommend you stop real quick and go watch it now before I over-explain or spoil any of its contents. Part 2. Nice vibes, bro. First and foremost, the song has a soft, positive energy. I feel like a song that was trying to be critical of women on Instagram would have a negative spirit, or at least a sarcastic tone. Your average Simple Plan song has the tonal energy of what I'd imagine this song would sound like if it set out to belittle basic white women. But with the soft piano riff, Bo's pillowy vocals, and the angelic backup singing, it feels more like a tribute to this basic kind of Instagram lady than a call-out. Not to mention, the physical space of the music video also feels accepting. It's a lot of soft, natural lighting, some really comfy-looking photos, lots of blankets and soft clothing and all that. Smiles as far as the eye can see, it feels like a really welcoming timeline. 
And when you consider the detail that he puts into recreating these types of photos, it's clear he has a love, or at least an appreciation for, this style of content. Again, I feel like a more sarcastic, critical song would recreate these photos much differently. That the hatred they have for these basic kind of white women would end up seeping through and they'd make each photo look ugly for some reason. But even when Bo's cheesin', there's an earnest quality to his performance, less than a sarcastic one. Like, the point still feels made that this stuff is basic, but it feels like he's giving this content life instead of just making fun of it. These tonal shifts that Bo takes away from the expected sarcastic style flip the message of the song from critical to supportive. But of course, it's still possible he just wrote a sweet melody to go under an otherwise sarcastic set of verses, right? To dispel that possibility, let's examine one line in particular. Part 3, one lyric I'm going to obsess way too much over. If this song were a boilerplate, women bad ballad, I feel like it would recreate all these photos and then turn around to comment on how bad all this basic white girl shit is, like that it reflects rotting brains or that it says a lot about a self-obsessed me generation or whatever. Like that they'd recreate all these photos, frame them all in a vapid way, pun not intended, and say that it all sounds miserable or sounds like hell. But after each of his verses listing off a bunch of photos, Bo drops the line, Is this heaven? Is this heaven? I don't think it's possible to make too much out of this lyric. The man literally says these photos all sound heavenly. I challenge you out there to come up with a more loving and less sarcastic way to describe all of these. Comparing these photos to heaven is very different from saying that they sound miserable. Instead of being sarcastic or negative, it's a positive, dare I say, loving way to describe them. And given the overall soft, positive vibes of the song, I think it's safe to say this is an earnest comparison for Bo, not a sarcastic one. Like, it doesn't feel like he's making fun of somebody who thinks these photos sound heavenly. It sounds like he just actually finds the aesthetic to be pleasant and soft and lovely, even. You know, it's funny, in a music video with dozens of pictures, it's this lyric that really speaks a thousand words. Oh god, that sounds so cheesy. Please forget I ever said that. But you might look at all this and still feel that the song presents a sarcastic, critical message. And I understand until we get to the end of the song. Part 4, the final verse. No, wait, maybe it's a bridge? Okay, I don't know musical theory that well, so let's just call this section, I don't know, Dead Mama Hours, who the fuck up? As we've seen so far, the first two verses follow a similar path. Bo lists off some generic Instagram photos, recreates them, then transitions into the chorus. But about halfway through the song, a radically new section comes in and changes the game. We're now introduced to the main character whose Instagram wall these photos come from. The photos are no longer just vague stand-ins for the basic types of things that white women post on Instagram, they now mark points in this lady's life. And rather than just a description of the next photo, we get a caption of her latest post. She drops a wonderfully heartfelt message to her mother, who, tragically, passed away a decade ago to the day. Still figuring out how to keep living without ya. It's got a little better, but it's still hard. Keep in mind, we see her celebrate her 27th birthday just before this, so we know she's had to live without a mom for her entire adult life. I mean, what can I say, but... But she doesn't wallow in her tragedy. She goes on to celebrate her accomplishments. Mama, I got a job I love in my own apartment. Mama, I got a boyfriend and I'm crazy about him. Your little girl didn't do too bad. Mama, I love you. Give a hug and kiss to dad. I don't know why that one was so weird to say, but here we are. The song goes back to listing off generic types of photos, but this bit immediately sets the track apart from other pieces of basic white women are bad content. 
This otherwise generic white lady is given ambitions, a tragic backstory, and a whole ass character arc to work through. Like the last photo mentioned is that she got engaged to, again, the boyfriend that she's crazy about. So even within the lyrics of the song, we're witnessing a personal journey, a victory over the trauma life put this woman through. She's no longer just a straw man used to make a cheap point about technology bad or women do be frivolous though. She's a fully realized person. And sure, the song still does poke fun at the types of things white women post, like golden retrievers and flower crowns, and it does take time to jest about her upper middle class status, which is not really related to this video. But in a mere 10 lines, this lady is given infinitely more character than any boomer comedy skit. And this all culminates into a beautiful final message. Part 5. Conclusion Given the pleasant melody, the loving recreations, the comparisons to heaven, and the elaborate backstory, White Woman's Instagram feels like a defense of basic posting rather than a condemnation. It gives a unique perspective on how and why we use social media in the first place. She's not self-obsessed, her photos aren't a sign of the degradation of Western civilization or whatever. For our main character, the photos of Latte Fomart or Tiny Pumpkins are an escape, a way of coping, and at their finest, they're a celebration of life's little victories. Rather than spend a decade wallowing in her parents' passing, she's powering forward and taking the time to appreciate the moments in life where she feels happy. Her Instagram timeline becomes almost an episodic novel of sorts as she battles through the stresses of life. And, in a sense, that's all of us. While our stresses are different, social media can be a space to step away from all that and celebrate what we've accomplished or what brings us joy. At the end of the day, White Woman's Instagram is a lesson in empathy. We might see a frivolous social media post in our daily lives and be tempted to cast judgment on the person. But in this song, Bo tries to get us to remember, there's a person behind each post, battling their own set of demons, and if posting a picture of an open window brings them peace, then so be it. Who are we to judge? That's one of the beauties of this World Wide Web of ours, that it gives us a bunch of different platforms for us to express our authentic selves. For a special that's otherwise critical of the internet and how it's impacting our society, it's beautiful and quite frankly mature of Bo Burnham to give such a nuanced defense of social media, providing us a fresh, human perspective on why social media might not be so bad after all. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone, be sure to toss me a like and subscribe down below. But if you really want to help me out, you can join me over on Patreon. Patrons get access to exclusive behind the scenes content, like early versions of every video, and exclusive Patreon only videos. Plus, if you join the Piley Benton's Biggest Boys tier, you get your name read off at the end of every video, which I am about to do once I pull up the names. Zoth, Revo Pregame, Emily. Kyle Foley, Jennifer Jones, Caffeine Unicorn, Goblin of the Year, Stockwell Homestead, Nilla Elites, and Cameron Fordo. So if you want to hear your lovely name read off at the end of every video, be sure to join me on this specific tier. Thanks much everyone, and I'll see you next time.